Well, good day, everyone. This is Jerry from Rhapsody Tours. Today, we are going to take a look at German cuisine. As in most countries, German cuisine has evolved through the centuries of social and political change and varies from region to region. So we'll take a look at the commonly known German foods as well as a couple of local specialties. Pork, beef and poultry are the main varieties of meat consumed in Germany, with pork being the most popular. The average person in Germany will consume up to 60 kilos of meat per year. Chicken is the most common poultry although duck, goose, and sometimes turkey are also enjoyed. It is not uncommon to find game meats in the grocery stores and restaurants. For example, boar, rabbit, and venison. Most of these can be found year-round. Germany has its specialties. To make one of their most popular, sauerbraten, it takes several days of marinating beef or venison in a vinegar or wine vinegar mixture to tenderize the tough cuts. A long tradition of sausage making exists in Germany with more than 1500 different types of sausage or Wurst. Most Wurst is still made from German sausage butchers natural castings derived from pork, sheep or lamb intestine. Among the most popular and most common are Bratwurst usually made of ground pork and spices, the Wiener which may be pork or pork and beef and is smoked and fully cooked in a water bath, and Blutwurst, or Schwarzwurst, made of blood, often from pigs or geese. There are literally thousands of types of cold cuts. A very popular and tasty way to have Wurst is Currywurst. This is where you take a kibasa sausage and smother it in a curry sauce with a little bit of curry powder. I'm sure it's healthy. Now fish. The most common freshwater fish on German menus is trout. But you can also find pike, carp, and European perch frequently listed. Many sea fish like fresh herring, tuna, mackerel, salmon, and sardines are well established throughout the country. Vegetables. Vegetables are used in stews, soups, and are also served as a side dish. Carrots, turnips, spinach, peas, broccoli, and many types of cabbage are very common. For example, rot kohl, which is a red cabbage, and sauerkraut. Asparagus, especially white asparagus known as spargo, is a common side dish or may be prepared as a main dish. Restaurants will sometimes devote an entire menu to nothing but white asparagus when it is in season. Spargo season is quite short, traditionally beginning in mid-May and it ends the end of June. They are delicious. In the southwestern part of the country, the prominent variety of noodles is Spätzle, made with eggs, flour, water and salt, and Maltaschen, traditional stuffed noodles similar to ravioli. Potatoes entered the German cuisine in the late 18th century. They can be served in salt water, mashed, or as fried potatoes. All are traditional. Dumplings are extremely popular and common as well as potato noodles, which are very similar to Italian gnocchi. German dishes are rarely hot and spicy, and the use of herbs is quite often common in cooking. One exception to this, though, is the mustard for sausages. The mustard, or zemf, is a very common accompaniment to sausages and can vary in strength, the most common version being Mittelschaf, which is somewhere between the traditional English and French mustards in strength. German mustard is usually less ascetic than the American varieties. Horseradish, another commonly used condiment either on its own or served in a paste enriched with cream or combined with mustard. The use of garlic has risen in popularity in recent decades due to the introduction and influence of French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Greek and Turkish cuisine. A wide variety of cakes and tarts are served throughout the country, most commonly made with fresh fruit. Apples, plums, strawberries, and cherries are regularly used in cakes. Cheesecakes are very popular, and the Black Forest cake, made with cherries, is probably the most well-known example of a wide variety of typically German torts filled with whipped or buttered cream. Germany has donuts. They don't have a hole. 
they are usually balls of yeast dough with jam or other fillings and are known as Berliner. An interesting side note. On August 26th, 1963, while in Berlin, to show support to the German people, after the Soviet Union put up the Berlin Wall, President John Kennedy announced in a very famous speech, Ich bin ein Berliner. His way of saying, I am a Berliner, I am with you. What he in fact said, I am a donut. It was all right. They knew what he meant. Ice cream and sorbets are very popular. Italian-run ice cream parlors were the first large wave of foreign-run eateries in Germany, becoming widespread in the 1920s. Spaghetti ice, which resembles spaghetti, tomato sauce, and ground cheese on a plate, is a very popular ice cream dessert. As I had mentioned in an earlier podcast, Germans love their bread. Daily, hundreds of types of breads, 12,000 different types of pastries and rolls, are produced in tens of thousands of bakeries throughout Germany. Bread is served usually for breakfast, as a white bread or roll, and in the evening as an open sandwich, using a dark bread, but rarely is it used as a side dish for a main meal. I had also mentioned before one of the major complaints of German expatriates in many parts of the world is their inability to find acceptable local breads. Breakfast, or Frühstück, as it is called, is a little different from traditional North American breakfast. It commonly consists of bread, toast, which is bread to make toast, bread rolls, with cold cuts, cheese, jam, marmalade, honey, eggs, strong coffee, or tea. Deli meats such as ham, salted meat, salami, are also commonly eaten on bread in the mornings, as are various cheeses. A variety of meat-based spreads, such as Liebewurst, or liverwurst, are also eaten during breakfast. Traditionally, the main meal of the day has been lunch, or Mittagessen, eaten around noon hour. Dinner is always the smaller meal, often consisting only of a variety of breads, meats, sausages, cheeses, and some kind of vegetables. If you think this is similar to breakfast, you're right. What do people like to drink in Germany? Well, beer pops to mind. It's very common throughout all parts of Germany, with many local and regional breweries producing a wide variety of superb beers. The Pale Lager, Pilsner, a style developed in the mid-19th century, is prominent in most parts of the country today, whereas wheat beer and other types of lager are also common, especially in Bavaria. German wine comes predominantly from areas along the Upper and Middle Rhine and its tributaries. Riesling and Silvaner are among the best-known varieties of white wine, while Spatburgunder and Dornfelder are important German red wines. There are sweet German wines produced, but they are sold mainly to English-speaking countries. They are rare to find in Germany. There are different types of schnapps available. Corn is a German spirit made from malt, wheat, rye, and or barley, and it is consumed predominantly in the middle and northern parts of Germany. Obstler is distilled from apples and pears, and Kirschwasser is distilled from plums and cherries. The drinking water is excellent quality and is available everywhere and at any time in Germany. Water is provided by the public water industry and can be had without hesitation directly from the tap. No chlorine is added. Regulations are even stricter for those who bottle water. There is no need to buy water in bottles while in Germany for health reasons, although the taste of the tap water can vary widely. Well, I hope this has given you an idea of what you can expect to eat when you visit Germany. For any regular listeners, if this podcast sounded a little off today, there is a reason. I am just getting over a middle ear infection and still have a bit of a ringing in my head. Okay, I'm going to use that today as my excuse for any mess-ups or mispronunciations. If you'd like more travel ideas or information about Germany, subscribe to the podcast and visit us at www.rhapsodytours.net That's R-H-A-P-S-O-D-Y tours.net Or you can reach us on Facebook at the Explore Germany page or on Twitter at Rhapsody Tours. If you have any comments, we'd love to see them. In our next podcast, 
we are going to begin looking at the regions in Germany. Until then, have a wonderful day. The Traveling Kilt Podcasts are a division of RhapsodyTours.net.